Okay, so we're going to continue our discussion on cell cycle and cellular reproduction here with the second part of the lecture. Uh, again, please keep in mind the focus is the cells going through this are going to make exact replications of themselves, duplicates, Xerox copies, whatever you want to call it. They need to be identical at the end. Skin, hair, bone, blood, etc. The general grouping or the name for these cells is what we call somatic cells. All body cells, hair, skin, bone, blood, etc. Except the cells that become eggs or sperm in our bodies. So we'll come back to that. Um, so we talked about the cycle. A lot of the cycle is made up of interphase. And then there's a small window called mitosis. And we've been talking about mitosis. Starts off with prophase, metaphase. Anaphase. Anaphase is where we left off in the first lecture, the last lecture there. Anaphase is the third phase of mitosis. This is when the DNA gets ripped apart and it is now half of a chromosome, what I'm going to call chromatids. You know, the picture, the book, some sources refer to it as daughter chromosomes. Same thing. I prefer using the term chromatid. I'll try to write that out. I think it's simpler to uh, to use different terms for the DNA based upon the stage that it's in. So we have chromatin, which is the big squiggly mess that looks like spaghetti noodles, chromosome, which is a X-like structure, and then I go to chromatid, which is half of a chromosome. Looks kind of like a V. Looks half of an X, looks like a V. All right, so chromatids. Those will appear when we are in anaphase. That's a distinct feature of anaphase. Now, the other major thing I want to make sure I point out during anaphase is the beginning of this thing called cytokinesis. So if you notice here and here, the cell membrane is starting to squeeze inward. Okay, this is the beginning of cytokinesis. All right, so cytokinesis begins. So cytokinesis is the physical pinching of the cell membrane, squeezing it. In animals, there's this rubber band called the contractile ring that goes around it. In plant cells, because they're hard and rigid because of that cell wall, there's a structure known as the cell plate, more of a kind of a cracking, breaking structure. Okay, so cytokinesis begins during anaphase. All right, so here's what we're going to see during anaphase. And here's our cell membrane dipping inward there, starting to bubble in a little bit there. Cytokinesis is beginning. You can see the cells starting to pinch there and there. Chromosomes have been pulled apart, and now they're back to, or they are in what we call chromatids. So again, the terminology here, they call it a daughter chromosome. I'm calling it a chromatid. Same thing. You use either term. I'm completely fine with that. I'll let you decide, but make sure you know both terms. Again, I lean towards these things are called chroma tits. Okay, let's wrap it up then. Telophase. This is the fourth phase. All right, so telophase is the fourth, fourth phase of mitosis. The DNA is actually going to now start to unravel and go back to that chromatin. It's going to unravel and you know, go into that spaghetti noodle feature or appearance as it's going into telophase and moving through telophase. The contractile ring keeps pinching inward. Here it is here. So the ring keeps squeezing. Now, interestingly enough, the ring looks like a bunch of little fibers here. These are going to be protein filaments that will squeeze and squeeze. So the ring 
is the physical structure and it forms this indentation known as a cleavage furrow. The furrow is the indentation, the kind of the compressing inward of the sides of the membrane. But the structure that causes a cleavage furrow is known as a contractile ring. So half of the genetic material should be up here. So half of your DNA and half should be down here. So you should have 46 chromatids and 46 chromatids in each cell. Continue to squeeze inward, cell continues to pinch, and eventually it pops the cell in half or squeezes the cell in half, and you have two cells side by side that are going to be half the size of the original cell that started. But if all has gone well, you have identical genetic material in the top cell and in the bottom cell. Okay, so visually looking at it, here's what your animal cell, animal cell looks like. There's one cell membrane almost completely pinched in half. Here's a second cell membrane. Here's the chromatin. There's our spaghetti noodles right there and there's still just a little bit of the membrane that hasn't pinched in half but give it another 10 20 minutes and you now have two cells that are half the size of the original all right cell cycles complete cells done it now goes back into interphase it's going to jump into interphase and it's going to go into g1 it's going to start right here and it's going to go into G1 in which it grows. The cell physically gets bigger, organelles double. It's going to take maybe four or five, six hours to do that. It's then going to go into S phase. DNA replicates. So now you double the volume of genetic material. So your 46 chromatins, TIDs, double, turn into the volume necessary to make 46 chromosomes. S phase, maybe three, four hours. So now we're up to between G1 and S phase, probably about 10 hours of your day. And then let's go into G2, some growth. The cell prepares to divide. It builds a bunch of proteins, six, eight hours. And now you're back to starting mitosis again. So from here all the way around to here, what we call interphase, generally will take 16 to 18 hours. And then you get this fast little of mitosis and six, eight hours, you've ripped the cell in half. You got two cells side by side. All right. So plant and animal cells are identical as they go through the phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, interphase, G1, S, G2. All of it's the same. The big difference with plants, let me make some notes here for us. The big difference with plants, plants lack a central. So when they're, when the, the oh, chromatids, there we go, when the Chromosomes are being pulled apart into chromatids because plants lack a centriole. They don't always do it evenly. They don't always split it evenly apart. So you might have, <coughs> excuse me, you might have 20 chromatids in one cell and 22 in the other cell. Plants still can survive and manage with this imbalance of genetic material. Animals doesn't work for us. We do not survive if we don't have a correct balance of genetic material. Okay, so there's our plant cell, same phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, same general features and appearance and characteristics. Okay, so animal cells, as I mentioned before, they use a contractile ring to squeeze the cell in half. 
That's the contractile ring down there. Squeezing, 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 pinching. Whereas plant cells, they use a thing called a plate to crack the cell in half. Okay, so plate is actually, it's a line of vesicles, little bags that line up here and just go from one side of the cell to the next and then they fuse together and eventually pop crack that cell in half and now you have two plant cells side by side so we're in Illinois there's cornfields all around listen sit and listen to the corn you can hear the corn grow. You hear these little cracks and pops and creaks and k -k -k. That's literally the cell plate cracking the cells in half as the corn is growing. Can't hear that in an animal cell because we don't crack it in half. We squeeze it. But in plant cells, you hear that crack and that pop and that break. So, all right. So now we got two cells side by side. They're going to grow. They're going to go through it again and again and again and again. Keep in mind. 50 times the original cell then tends to die off and deteriorate. Um, one phase we didn't mention, let's talk briefly about this, is this little thing called GEO. GEO, over to the side here, is a resting phase. So after mitosis is over, after telophase is complete, some cells jump into GEO and they rest. They hang out, they stop, they pause, and then they might come back into G1 and grow, replicate their DNA, go into G2, and then do this again. But GO is a resting phase. So I want you to think about cells like liver, nerve, other tissues within the body. These cells enter the geo phase, and some of them may sit for a year, like liver cells. It takes a year for it to come out of geo before it's then going to replicate itself. So consider how long it will take to heal and repair a damaged liver. You cut your skin within two, three days, it's healing. Depending on the damage, it might take a week, and then you're healed. Liver takes a long time. Nerve cells. You damage nerve cells, they're in GO. Once that tissue has developed, once that tissue has matured in the body, those cells take a break. They go into GO and they say, hey, we've developed and built our cells, our structures. We don't need to come out of GO. So that's a problem. So this is leading us into this conversation on stem cells. I want you guys to think about it, look into it, Develop your own opinion. Is it something we should continue to do? Can we take a cell? Or we can, we're doing it. We're taking stem cells, basic precursor cells that have not figured out what they're going to be. And we're learning how to direct them down certain cellular paths. Take the stem cell and tweak it to make it become nerves. Tweak it to become liver cells. Tweak it to become all these different parts of the body that we need to heal and repair and develop and grow. So should we do it? That's something I want you guys to take a stance on. What are the legalities, the ethics, the morality behind it? So consider Muhammad Ali. Think about his health issues. Christopher Reeve, the original real Superman, he died. Poor guy fell off a horse, became a quadriplegic. Nothing we did could save him. Nothing we did medically could fix him. But stem cells have shown the promise of fixing that. So back in the late 90s, researchers severed the spinal cord of a little primate called a marmoset. They used stem cells and they regrew the spinal cord and the marmoset regained function. But we're not doing this for people. Think about Michael J. Fox with Parkinson's. So all these people, these three people, plus unfortunately people we know in our lives, face these issues. Should we continue doing research for this? Make 
you know, get an opinion, support it, and make your voice heard.